Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome to Snatch Chat, where I'm here to help you lose fat, but not your mind. I am Tiffany, certified personal trainer, nutrition specialist, and I also happen to snatch some bodies, okay? Um, so today, we will be talking more about quarantine. Uh, last time, I told you some behaviors that you could take, uh, three things that you can implement that will help you with your either weight loss goals or maintaining um, and not gaining weight for the quarantine, uh, this whole coronavirus scare and all of that. Um, you can find that video link below. Uh, but today I wanted to get more into specifics with nutrition. Okay, so uh, just recently, not too long ago, I released a caloric deficit guide uh, to kind of make the point that it's really the most important thing and in that was a pretty much 15 fast track that will help you get to caloric deficit relatively fast okay so 11 of the 15 were nutrition uh, tips so today I'm giving you three that I think are really really applicable to this time okay and things that you can do that are relatively easy okay there's nothing that's like you know you don't have to change behavior so drastically um, it really just takes doing little simple things at a time um, and having them add up so I'm gonna go over the three that I think are really really game changers um, so we'll get into that uh, first I want to say subscribe uh, I will be releasing videos regularly and just helping you, you know, my whole thing is, you know, fitness that's sustainable, things that you can do to make it a lifestyle change and not just a fad, okay? Um, and that's how people keep weight off. So it's one thing to lose the weight, it's a whole nother thing to keep it off and the only way to do that is to change your habits and habits is what I do, okay? That's my focus, so um, definitely subscribe and make sure you get the three workouts that I have. So I put together three full-length workouts that I'm giving away totally for free uh, just to get people active and in between, you know, getting the workouts, I do dish out some nutrition um, advice and also a little bit of mentality and habit stuff. So um, definitely make sure that you check those things out, okay? So let me look at my notes. Oh, yes, that's the other thing. Um, as I said before, this is a chat, which means I am, you know, casually talking. I have notes in front of me. I'm trying to keep these as short as I can. Um, so basically, it will be in a format of me just going to three different points, okay? But I will be looking at my board every now and then. I will get better at keeping my eye on the camera. But, you know, cut a sister some slack, okay? I'm, I'm going to master this whole thing. <laughs> it's just new, so I need me some notes, okay? I probably always keep notes. Um, and also, this is how I do my workouts. So it's always raw, it's always me. That's how I do my subscription. Uh, my members seem to love it, my clients like it, so I'm gonna stick to what I know, okay? All right, so now that that is out the way, um, I'm going to give you the three nutrition tips that are gonna lend to your caloric deficit best, okay? Um, and just a reminder, caloric deficit is what it's all about with weight loss. Um, you cannot lose weight without a caloric deficit. It is the one scientific proof, okay? And every other argument, you know, keto versus carbs and intermittent fasting and all these other topics, they are methods to the means. And the methods are those things, and the means is caloric deficit. So those are the different ways you can possibly get there. And then the caloric deficit is what you're actually trying to get. Okay, so I just like to make that very clear. Okay, that is the most important thing. So these are my three tips for what you can do right now to minimize the calories you're taking in. Okay, so the very first one is lean meats, okay, and lean food. So, meat is a big one. Um, so, one thing people aren't aware of is that fat has a lot more calories than carbs and protein. So, there are these little, like, scientific things uh, that apply to weight loss that people don't really think about. So, fat has 9 calories per gram, while protein 
and carbs have four. Okay, so two and a half times more. And that's the reason low fat diets have been pretty much the rule of thumb since the beginning of time. Even though I know recently a lot of these other diets have kind of sprouted up that aren't so low fat, but in general, the reason why low fat has always been the kind of, you know, recommendation is because most fattening things have a lot of calories. So one of the things you can do to minimize your caloric intake is to eat leaner meats. And what I mean by that is less fattening ones. So first, that is less pork and less beef because those are very high in fat for the most part and very high in calories. Um, and also they're really they're relatively not great for your heart. Okay, I don't want to say bad for your heart. Moderation is a thing, but you know, they're not ideal <laughs> for chronic diseases and uh, your heart and for fat intake. So there's plenty of reasons to kind of stay away from those. And then picking leaner meats when you do. So uh, chicken is a great example. So chicken isn't as damaging, but there are better parts of the chicken than other parts of the chicken. Uh, one of the biggest keys is to try not to eat skin. So chicken thighs with skin. Let's just use that for an example. A chicken thigh with skin for just a four ounce piece, okay, you're looking at like 15 to 17 grams of fat, um, hundreds of calories in just one piece. If you got the skinless, boneless ones, okay, for sure, it cuts the fat by almost three. So you're looking at like six grams of fat per four ounces. Little things like that. The skin is always a thing. Same thing goes with wings. So I know white meat versus dark meat is a thing. Wings is white meat, but the skin on them makes them very high fat, okay? So the leaner your meats, the better. Um, if you can do chicken breast, that's even better. But the best is fish. <laughs> um, so the more fish you can eat to, you know, kind of... So this is the thing. You don't have to get rid of anything, okay? This is just a sidebar. You just want to get into a habit of subbing better things for less better things. So if you're eating steak, say, like five times a week... Okay, this is where the chats come in because I just have to think of how, if you're eating steak like five days a week, okay, then lower it to three first and then put one chicken day and then one fish day or something. Like, so you're doing little habits at a time. So I just wanted to make that sidebar, but fish is the best way to go because fish is very low calorie and it's high protein, it's filling, and that's what we're going for. So... Yeah, that's pretty much my spiel with the actual food and the lean meat kind of thing. Um, and then if you're a vegetarian or vegan, this would apply to things like avocado. So avocado is very, very popular. It is healthy. However, it is very fattening and it's high in calories. So if fat loss is your goal and you're eating a salad with a whole avocado on it, you're probably having a hard time <laughs> losing weight. It's not about how healthy the food is, okay? That applies to how you're eating, and I will get into that in the next point. And that, it does affect how, you're, how your calories, but calories are calories. So whether it's an avocado or a chicken thigh, 200 calories is 200 calories. Just keep that in mind, okay? Which leads me into my second point, which is eat nutrient-dense foods, okay? So in the case of an avocado... Yes, it has hundreds of calories, but it's satiating, right? So when you eat one, uh, if you eat half of one on a salad with some, you know, chicken and a whole bunch of veggies, you are going to be really full for a long time. And that is where the real secret is for weight loss with nutrient, like, okay, I, you see, this is the stutter, nutrient-dense foods. The secret is, is that they make you full. Okay, it's not so much that the food, the food is better for you for health reasons, but for fat loss, the main, the main sticker is that they keep you full longer. So, that being said, you should be trying to eat real meals, 
okay and nutrient dense foods so grains whole grains brown food okay um lots of vegetables half veggies on the plate is a really good rule of thumb um one of my favorites is Dr. Oz, and one thing he says, which I love, I don't necessarily apply it, I ain't even gonna lie, but he says you should treat uh, meat as the side dish, and that vegetables should be the star of the show. Um, and if you apply that, you will cut a lot of calories automatically, because vegetables are very, very low in calories, and they're very filling, okay? Um, some are more than, than others, and I will get into that point for point number three, uh, but vegetables as a whole are very, very, very filling, so the more you can eat of them, the less you will eat other things, so... Um, I think there's a lot of talk about like nutrient dense foods and better foods and what foods are better for you and all this. And there are different reasonings for it. But when it comes to weight loss, it's all about how many calories you're eating total a day. So the less you eat, the better and the lower the calorie intake. Okay. That is the main point to take away. Okay. And then so the third point, which is my favorite point and a point that I think is understated in fitness and that is about fiber okay so fiber is secret sauce okay i am obsessed with the fiber point it, it's become like my favorite thing recently um even as a fitness person i've only really been following this very like seriously for maybe the last six months but it really is a game changer and Basically, so when I was studying for my nutrition specialist certification, I came across the section of fiber, and to be honest, its whole point is to slow the process of digesting food. <laughs> that is its whole role in the whole scheme of things. So when you think about that, um, if, you, if your digestion is slowing, that means you are staying full longer, right? So basically, it just forms like a gel, you know, in your, in your stomach and stuff. I mean, I'll, I'll spare you the details, but basically, it takes a really long time for it to digest, okay? Um, so I started implementing it, and I started paying attention to my fiber intake. Um, and the first way I did that was with my protein bars. So sometimes I'll eat a protein bar after a workout. Um, I do prefer real food, uh, but if you have to get to um, some protein fast, you know, protein bars are obviously a method and you want to have protein right away after strength training, by the way. Um, very, very important. Um, anyway, so I started paying attention to my fiber in the protein bars and I would notice that some had 17 grams of fiber and some would have like five which is a very big discrepancy right um, a lot of times things have similar you know caloric you know intake or carbs and all that stuff but under the carbs is dietary fiber and those numbers would be very different so what I notice is all of my protein bars with high fiber content I would be full for a very long time um, and I would not be as hungry as fast so I started looking into it and it's the thing okay it really really does help so now I pretty much compare things very highly on fiber when picking two things um, so that is some secret sauce start paying attention to fiber if there's two brands of something and they're about the same calories and everything is comparative but one has 15 grams of uh, fiber and the other one has 10 go with the 15 okay um rule of thumb it works it's amazing i would really really go with that um and it's, if anything i would start with that rule i think it's really really a good one <laughs> no actually no all three of these rules are really good ones i would do all three but fiber is like more of a secret sauce one because nobody talks about it um so then also on my list i have some suggestions of fi high fiber foods okay so you can find it in oats okay so if you like oatmeal and things like that uh, you can go for that for breakfast that's a good way to start your day uh, beans beans are amazing in general because they just they have protein they have you know fiber all kinds of stuff and that's why when you eat beans you feel it right <laughs> so clearly fiber can make you have to go to the bathroom Okay, because of what it's 
this whole process, but it's really good for you. But you notice when you eat beans, you feel a certain way and you're bloated and you're not trying to eat no chips right after, right? <laughs> Nobody's trying to have no chips an hour after having beans, but that's my whole point. You want things that are going to keep you full. Okay. Citrus fruits have them. Um, citrus fruits don't have as much fiber, but they do have it and they're good for you. Um, I would, as a sidebar, especially times like this, you should be high in vitamin C right now. Immune system boosting is a thing. It's important. Vitamin C, vitamin D, uh, and back to the first point that I was talking about earlier, fish, omega threes, all these things are really good for your immune system. Uh, anti-inflammatory, uh, spices like oregano and thyme, um, all that stuff. So that's just a sidebar, but citrus fruits do have fiber in them. So I've noticed recently that I've been on oranges. So I've been e eating more oranges and after I eat an orange, I'm very satisfied. Like I feel a certain kind of refreshment. It's, it's very, very pleasing. And I've never been an oranges person, but lately I'm loving some oranges. <laughs> so definitely citrus fruits okay and then vegetables like brussels sprouts um don't things have those things will bloat you right away and if you ever notice certain vegetables you feel a certain kind of like you know that just that bloated full feeling it's kind of like the same thing you get with water which is was one of my points last time for the other video is to drink more water um because but water has zero calories, so it's like the winner almost. <laughs> and you can drink it all day and it's, it replenishes your system. But, you know, that whole thing of eating something or drinking something that actually almost bloats you to where you, you're really satisfied, okay? That is the secret sauce to eat real food, okay? Real food leads to less eating, less snacking, and you're more mindful of the connection okay so once you start realizing that when you eat real food that you're not eating like every hour on the hour you will start to implement change and it will come okay so those are my three points as a recap you're gonna go to more lean meat and fish uh you know cut back on that steak and that pork it ain't good for your heart anyways we need to do something about that it's a whole thing we got to do better with that um, nutrient dense foods, half veggies on the plate if possible, whole starches, whole wheats, whole grains, all that good stuff. Um, and then the last one is my favorite is fiber. Okay. So start comparing your fiber rates, uh, start eating more fiber, um, pay attention to what it does. And most people do not get their fiber intake, you know, the minimum, you know, needs for it. So definitely definitely want to do that so those are the three points i hope you found them useful i would try to implement at least one of them to start and then maybe you can build or you can go for all three and see which one sticks or see if all three stick or whatever they're very small changes they're nothing too drastic and you don't have to do drastic measures with them just implement a little at a time and see if you notice a change okay um other than that like i said get your three workouts okay subscribe all that good stuff Till next time, take care of yourself and I will see you soon.